Over the past few months, we have been producing a series of videos on the history of computer animation. So far, we have covered the early experiments of John Whitney all the way through to the success of Toy Story. In this final video, we will look at the dominance of computer animated films as well as motion capture and the rise of flash cartoons, and take a peek at what the future may have in store. The mid to late 90s saw the dawn of the information age. With web browsers making the internet more accessible, the suffix .com became a license to print money. Several e-commerce and entertainment websites were launched during this period known as the .com boom. In 1996, FutureWave Software developed Future Splash Animator, a tool that can not only design and animate vector graphics, but allow them to be incorporated into the web. FutureWave was acquired by Macromedia later that year, and this program was rebranded as Flash. Flash became one of the most widely used apps on the internet for interactive websites, games, and of course, animation. The first significant Flash cartoon was 1997's The Goddamn George Liquor Program by John Chris Felusi, though as with John Lasseter in the last video, the less said about him, the better. Other early examples include David B. Williams' World Girl, Joe Cartoon, probably best known for Frog in a Blender, and Dice Raw's video for the song Thin Line Between Ra and Jiggy. Flash opened up a new world of possibilities. It significantly cut the cost and labor of animation and offered artists a chance to have their work seen by millions. Websites like Newgrounds hosted user-generated content that other users could vote on, creating a community around these cartoons. One of the most popular artists to emerge from Newgrounds was English animator David Firth. Firth's work began showing up on the website in 2004 to immediate praise, particularly his Salad Fingers series. Salad Fingers is a hallucinatory nightmare featuring the titular character roaming a wasteland, rubbing himself against nettles and rusty objects. For something a little less isolating, we have the brothers Chaps, Mike and Matt Chapman. They are the creators of another early Flash phenomenon, Homestar Runner. The site was launched in early 2000 and focused on the series' namesake, who would quickly be eclipsed by rival Strongbad with the introduction of the Strongbad emails. This was a recurring segment in which Strongbad would answer fans' emails in an insulting way. Strongbad emails was such a hit that Chapmans were soon able to quit their jobs and make a living solely off of animating. This is probably my favorite aspect of Flash, the idea that allowed independent artists to reach an audience that otherwise would have been impossible. The popularity of this work has since led to the animation industry accepting Flash, and many television shows have been made on the platform. Macromedia was acquired by Adobe in 2005, and Flash rebranded as Animate in 2016. Animation is not natural, it's exaggerated, expressive. It conveys the essence of moving rather than capturing it exactly. Since the medium's infancy, animators have attempted to replicate human movement through techniques like rotoscoping, which saw actors performing an action with animators later tracing over their performance. Motion capture began as a photogrammetric tool in the study of athletic movement. Subjects would wear a suit with markers on their joints capable of sending signals that could be extrapolated by computer, as technology has advanced, and mapped out as data. The data could then be used for scientific or medical purposes, as well as for entertainment. By the late 1990s, motion capture was being used to bring characters to life in major film productions, uh, the first being Ahmed Best's performance of Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars Episode I, and soon entire films were being produced with motion capture. Artists were now not only able to create fully CGI environments, but exact recreations of actors, seamlessly combining these with real-life footage. One of the most pivotal moments in motion capture came with Andy Serkis' performance of Gollum in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. This marked the first time the technique was used in real time, with Serkis providing not only Gollum's voice, but also acting in his place. He has gone on to make a career to portraying CG characters, including King Kong and Captain Haddock in The Adventures of Tintin. Some critics see mocap as lazy, claiming it replaces the expressiveness and skill of animators, but Circus sees the technology as another form of makeup. Motion capture has advanced to the point where markers can be placed on the actor's face with their facial expressions mapped to the digital characters. Actors are no longer simply lending a voice to these roles, but embodying them completely. Among the leading researchers in modern computer graphics is Paul Debevec. His work and influence can be seen in the effects in the previous segment, uh, particularly the digital lookalikes from the Matrix trilogy. In 2000, Debevec's team was able to capture the reflectance field over the human face, allowing a photorealistic reproduction. This was achieved with the use of a light stage comprised of dozens of lights and photographs taken from various angles and expressions. In 2008, Debevec presented Digital Emily, a digitally constructed human face capable of conveying realistic emotion, and Digital Ira in 2013, which could do the same only in real time. 
With DevOfX's newest light stage, it is possible to capture and render an entire human body, as well as replicate the lighting from any setting. Ever since the success of Toy Story, computer animation has dominated the industry, and Pixar has continued pushing the boundaries of what the medium is capable of. Nine of their films have won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, with four among the 50 highest grossing films of all time. They open the door for other studios like DreamWorks and Illumination, and today, nearly every animated film released is created, in some part, on a computer. Without a doubt, computers have made the animation process easier, yet technology is always evolving. Augmented and virtual reality present the possibility of total immersion, and image-based modeling has the potential to allow digital resurrections, kind of like those 90s commercials where dead celebrities would sell you products. Imagine Humphrey Bogart acting alongside Ryan Gosling, or more personally, spending time with a deceased loved one in an immersive photorealistic memory. And with this speculation of what the future may hold, we've come to the end of our series. Now, this was never intended to be a complete or exhaustive history of computer animation. I'm sure I've missed a lot, but hopefully these videos have given you an overview, and maybe piqued your interest enough to pursue it further. I will post links to relevant material in the description, and if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and be sure to check us out on Patreon, where for just $5 a month you can get exclusive videos as well as everything we publish. I've been Brian Clark. Thank you so much for watching.